praise the Lord for these beautiful songs that uh, warm our hearts, you know, because it's cold. But Jesus in our hearts, we're going to be okay. We are going to be okay. Before we start this message, uh, I'd like you to open your Bibles on uh, Leviticus. Leviticus uh, is going to be chapter 16. The Lord has a message for us today. We are living in a serious time. I mean, it's a serious time. And the devil wants to disconnect us from Jesus completely. We have a message today about the day that we are living. And this day, Satan wants to erase from our minds. We are going to start reading Leviticus 16, and we're going to read 16 starting uh, verses 29. We just sing a wonderful song that Jesus, Jesus Christ is coming soon. And it requires preparation. 1629, and uh, we're going to read 29 to 30, 29. We're going to read 29 and, uh, 30 and 31, until 31. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this message today. We ask you, Father, that you open our hearts, open our minds, help us to understand the word for today, Father. We want to be close to you. We want to be connected with you, Father. So teach us today. We ask you, Father, that you clean our hearts, fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit, so we can honor and glory your name. We thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 29 to 31 says, Leviticus 16, and this shall be a statue forever, forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be on or if your own country or a stranger that sojourn among you. For on that day shall the priest make shall the priest make you make you uh, atonement for you to cleanse you that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and you shall afflict, you shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna get started to say you, we are going to be reading what's happening on the day of atonement. This comes from the sanctuary message, a message for us today, a message that we need to take serious, a message that the Lord gives to us so we can be one with Jesus. There is none other name under heaven giving among men whereby we must be saved, Acts 4.12. 
The next day, John see Jesus coming into him, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. The first and great commandment is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. Luke 10, 27. A revival of true godliness among us is the greatest and most urgent of all our needs. To seek this should be our first work. There must be earnest effort to obtain the blessing of the Lord, not because God is not willing to bestow his blessing upon us, but because we are unprepared to receive it. Our Heavenly Father is more willing to give his Holy Spirit to them that ask him than our earthly parents to give good gifts to their children. Love to Christ will be the spring of action. Those who feel the constraining love of God do not ask how little, how little may be given to meet the requirements of God. They do not ask for the lowest standard, but aim at perfect conformity to the will of their Redeemer. That steps to Christ, page 44. I guess, uh, I guess we need a new battery. I got it. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves Loves of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self control, brutal, despised of good, traitors, headstrong, health, lovers of pleasure rather than loves of God having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such a people, turn away. Second Timothy 3.1. This is the last days. Whosoever hear these sayings of mine, Christ said, and do them, I will liken him unto, unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat, and beat upon their house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock, and every one that hear the says of mine, and, do, and does them not, shall be like unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descend, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon their house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Can God's law really be kept? Can God's law really be kept? Like we just read now, we are living in the last days. And God told the Bible, told us, he's going to have a people. He's going to have a people that he's going to keep all his commandments. He's going to have a people that keep the faith of Jesus, keep the faith of Jesus. And Jesus also said, my people will hear my voice and follow me. In 1844, our great high priest entered the most holy place. 
of the heavenly sanctuary to begin the work of the invest investigative judgment. The cases of the righteous dead have been passing in review before God. When their work shall be completed, judgment is to be pronounced upon the living. How precious, pay attention to this, how precious, how important are these solemn moments. Each of us has a case pending in the court of heaven. This is select message uh, uh, one. Satan has told God that anybody, nobody can keep his laws. And this is going to be against God's name. That's why I put the, that's why I put the uh, question there. God is going to have a people that's going to keep all his commandments. God's name is the only thing we need to take care of now. Is God is going to be victorious or God is going to be a defeat? We're going to go through this study and we see the game is not over yet. It looks like the devil is going to win. God has a people here and he tells his people, be holy. As the ministration of Jesus closed in the holy place, as he passed into the holiest and he stood before the ark containing the law of God, he sent another mighty angel with a third message to the world. As Jesus finished his, uh, his work in the holy place, he moved to the most holy place. And we learn that he sent another mighty angel with a third message to the world. And the third angel's message, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Revelation 14, 9 to 10. And the question is, are we, are we going to receive the seal of God or the mark of the beast? God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare a people to stand true to him during the investigative judgment. Our focus, focus on our attention on the present work of Jesus in the most holy place. As we learn, Jesus is in the most holy place. So our attention should be in the most holy place. Jesus sent us the third angel's message to not receive the mark of the beast. We learned that the mark of the beast is the Sunday worship. So we have this time here that we are living the day of atonement. It's going on right now. And it starts on 1844. On this day, the people we supposed to afflict our souls. We need to obtain victory over pride, selfishness, love of the world, every wrong word, every wrong actions. It involves the whole heart, including 
motives and feelings. This is the final test. We should focus and stay connected with Jesus. Here, the character was tested, the destiny determined. We have to be reflecting Jesus' character fully as the Sunday law comes. So you can see how serious it is this time that we are living. This is the day of atonement, the hour of judgment. And very soon, right now, it's happening, the judgment of the dead. Very soon, it's going to pass to us. We're going to have to have victory over this, over the world. And, and, and listen to this. Jesus said, I overcome the world. Jesus was victorious. And with Jesus, we can be victorious. How many times we ask, Lord, is this is a salvation issue? Lord, is this is a salvation issue? Are you going to keep me out of the kingdom for this? This is serious thought, serious question that we have today among our people. We don't want to do what the Lord wants us to do. We better, we prefer ask Jesus, is this is a salvation issue, Jesus? Are you going to keep me out of this because I do, I'm doing this? Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is, which is your reasonable service. And God says it's a reasonable service, reasonable. He's not asking us nothing crazy. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him, Mark 10, 51. Jesus asking me, Jesus asking you today, what do you want that I can do for you? You can ask your question, you can ask this, uh, you can tell Jesus every day what you want him to do, because this is a daily, daily connection with Jesus. It's a spiritual preparation. Don't think you know everything. Don't think that you don't need it. You can skip studying your Bible. You can skip praying. Jesus wants to walk in my heart. Jesus wants to live in your heart, in my heart. Set your mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Coloss uh, Col Colossians 3, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the re renew of your mind, that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Philippians 4, 8. To bring men back into harmony with God. That's what we're talking about today. To bring men back into harmony with God. 
So to elevate and enable his moral nature that he may again reflect the image of the creator is the great purpose of all the education and discipline of life. So important was this work that the Savior left the courts of heaven and came in person to this earth, that he might teach men how to obtain a fitness for the higher life. So important, so important was this work. Jesus came down here, living 33 years. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally mind is death, but to be spiritually mind is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, for indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Cannot please God. We should know what we must do to be saved. We should not, by brethren, my brethren and sisters, flow along with the popular current, with the world. Our present work is to come out from the world and be separate. This is the only way we can walk with God as did Enoch. Choose Christ today. If we are not advancing, if we are not advancing, you are retrograding, moving backward. Here we see the sanctuary, the earthly sanctuary. Here we learn justification, justification by faith. Moving to the holy place, we learn sanctification. I need you to go. We're gonna read some. Uh, we're gonna read some uh, scriptures now. Romans three twenty four. I need you to go there. Romans three twenty four. Justification on the outer court. Sanctification on the holy place. Glorification on the most holy place. I think you have uh, heard that before. But one thing that is good for us to remember, this is the plan of salvation. We cannot lose focus of this. We cannot lose focus of the sanctuary message. Romans 3.24. Romans 24, we read there, it's going to be the justification process. We, we, we are not supposed to, to stay only on justification. That's why God gave us the sanctuary message. Did you find uh, Romans 3.24? Let's read. Uh, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that it is in Christ Jesus. So here you are justified freely by his grace. Justification. Free from the penalty of sin. I just, uh, I just break it down here for us. You know, there is a lot for us to learn here, here, and here. So I break it down here so we can move forward. So we don't have time uh, to stay on that. Sanctification, 622. Let's go to sanctification, uh, Romans 622. Romans 622. Romans 622. The Bible says, but now 
being made free from sin, being made free from sin, and become servants to God. We have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Amen. Sanctification. And, and we learning that there is another process that's going to be glorification. Romans 8, 21. Free from the presence of sin. Let's go there. Presence of sin. From the presence. Free. Romans 8, 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So we see we are being delivered from the bondage of corruption. No more. Repentance and faith, the surrender of the will, and the consecration of the affections to God are the means appointed for the accomplishment of this work. To obtain a knowledge of this divinely ordained plan should be our first study, should be our first study. To comply with its requirements, our first effort. To comply with its requirements, our first effort. Salvation is more than forgiveness of sin. We learn right here. We learn right here. Because here, we are forgiven. Salvation is more than forgiveness of sin. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. And he said to me, for 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Daniel 8, 14. On this, it should be our focus. Christ is moving to the most holy place. When Christ moved to the most holy place, in 1844, we are living in the, in the great day of atonement. And it is now time that everyone should repent before God, confess his sin, and by living faith rest upon the merits of a crucified and living Savior. So we are, we are seeing here that in 1844, Jesus, he went to the most holy place. And now we are living in that day, in the day of atonement. If you see the message on Revelation 14, the first angels, he sent us, he sent us to that day. He sent us to the most holy place. This is the hour of judgment. And we stand, we should, we have to stand true to God. Now Christ is in the heavenly sanctuary. And what is, what is he doing? Making atonement for us. Cleansing the sanctuary from the sins of the people. Then we must enter by faith into the sanctuary with him. We must commence the work in the sanctuary of our souls. We are to cleanse ourselves from all defilement. We must cleanse ourselves from all fitness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Second Corinthians 7, 1. Daily, we need the fresh revealing of his presence. Jesus wants to dwell in us. The coming of Christ as our high priest to the most holy place for the cleansing of the sanctuary, brought to view in Daniel 8, 14. 
the coming of the Son of Man to the Ancient of Days, as presented in Daniel 7.13. This is all Bible. And the coming of the Lord to his temple, foretold by Malachi, are descriptions of the same event. Daniel 8.14, Daniel 7.13, this is the same event. Jesus moving to the most holy place. And this is also represented by the coming of the bridegroom to the marriage, described by Christ in the parable of the ten virgins of Matthew 25. In the ten, for the ten virgins, you're learning that we need to prepare ourselves. The body room is coming. Come and meet him. Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, Leviticus 23, 27. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the seventh day of the month, you shall afflict your souls. You shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourn among you. For on that day shall the priest make atonement for you to cleanse you, that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Leviticus 16, 29, and 30. This is the verses that we read at the beginning. Okay. We learn that we need to afflict our souls. We need to be examining our hearts today. We need to confess our sins. We need to walk humbly before God. This is the day of atonement. Christ had come, not to the earth as they expect, but as for the shadow in the type to the most holy place of the temple of God in heaven. He is represented by the prophet Daniel as coming at this time to the ancient of days. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came, not to this earth, but to the ancient of days. And they brought him near before him. Here we see Jesus coming to the most holy place. And this is the same thing, opening of the investig investigative judgment. That started on the 1844. It's going on right now, the judgment of the dead. We are now living in that great day. Never forget that. In the typical service, while the high priest was making the atonement for Israel, all were required to afflict their souls by repentance of sin and <coughs> humiliation before the Lord, lest they be cut off from among the people. In like manner, all who would have their names retained in the book of life should now, in the few remaining days of their probation, afflict their souls before God by sorrow for sin and true repentance. There must be a deep, faithful searching of heart. Great controversies 489. That's why it's a very serious time we are living today. There must be a deep, a faithful searching of heart. Whosoever commits sin transgress also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John 3, 4. The opening, the opening of the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary in 1844, as Christ entered there to perform the closing work of the atonement. 
those who by faith follow the great high priest as he entered upon his ministry in the most holy place, beheld the ark of his testament. As they had studied, as they had studied the subject of the sanctuary, they had come to understand the Savior's change of ministration. And they saw that he was now, he was now officiating before the ark, before the ark of God, pleading his blood in behalf of sinners. So we know that the ark, it is in the most holy place. Seek God for healing to remove a mind of the flesh. That mind of flesh got to go. Here, everything changed. Everything changed in the most holy place. Uh, I, I'm just going to go through very quickly here. Some things that uh, people ask, why do we have to eat like this? Why you, you, we can eat that, you know? Uh, so we, we, and, and we still, you know, Jesus has been there since 1844, and we're still talking about this. <coughs> Vegetarianism. Jewelry. A business of alcohol. Dancing. What's going on here if we are supposed to be in the most holy place, to be one with Jesus? That's why Jesus sent you the message, come out, of, come out of here, my people. The sacred work of Christ for the people of God that is going on right now in the heavenly sanctuary should be our constant study. It's constant study. We need to be studying, uh, 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 put our knees on the floor, you know, talking to Jesus. This is the great day of atonement. Why the sins of penitent believers are being removed from the sanctuary, there is to be a special work of purification. There is to be a special work of purification of putting away of sin among God's people upon earth. The faith I live by. Without faith, is it, it's impossible to please God. The people of God must purify their souls through obedience to the truth and be prepared to stand without fault before him at his coming. So now is the time for us to prepare and to be in our fault. And to be in our fault. Not, not, not when Jesus comes. That's why we need to afflict our souls. We need to afflict our souls today. In order for us to receive the seal of God. As Jesus died on Calvary, he cried, it's finished. It's finished. And the veil of the temple was rent in, tw in twain, from the top to the bottom. This was to show that the service of the earthly sanctuary were forever finished, and that God would no more meet with priests in the earthly temple to accept their sacrifice. The blood of Jesus was then shed, which was to, offer, was to be offered by himself in the heavenly sanctuary. As the priests enter in the most holy place, once in a year, to cleanse the earthly sanctuary. So Jesus entered the most holy place, the most holy of the heavenly. At the end of 2,300 days of Daniel 8 in 1844, to make a final atonement for all who could benefit by his mediation and thus to cleanse the sanctuary. So we understand here at one meant we live in the day of atonement it's to be at one with Jesus to be to be being at one with Jesus to be one with Jesus to be in harmony with Jesus to be in harmony with the words of Jesus 
the reconciliation of God and humankind through Jesus Christ. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So we need a new mind. Acquainted now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Job 22, 21. Be reconciled with him and be at peace. Thereby good will come to you. Job 22, 21. This is just different versions. That means agree with God and be at peace. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. Isaiah 44, 45, 22. By now, we should have in our minds, that's the day that we are living. We are living in the great and typical day of atonement. We must individually seek God. This is a personal work. Let us draw near to God. Let us draw near to God, allowing nothing to come into our efforts that would misrepresent the truth for this time. Let everyone confess, not, this, not his brother's sin, but his own sin. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, in need of prayer, not my brother, not my friend, not my daughter. It's me, O oh Lord. Let him humble his heart before God and become so filled with the Holy Spirit that his life will show that he has been born again. Amen? Amen. The intercession of Christ in man's behalf, in man's behalf, in the sanctuary above, is an essential is as essential to the plan of salvation as was his death upon the cross. So pay attention to this. By his death, he began the work which after his resurrection, he ascended to complete in heaven. We must, by faith, enter into the veil, whither the forerunner is for us enter. Amen? So the plan of salvation is not only about forgiveness. We need to go into within the veil by faith. We need to follow Jesus where he went for our reconciliation, complete reconciliation. I, even I, am he, the Lord declares, that blot out, blot out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Isaiah 43, 25. The very image of God is to be reproduced in me and you. The honor of God, the honor of Christ, is involved in the perfection of the character of his people. That's why God says, be holy, be holy, because I am holy. And Jesus is doing this work right now. And this work is perfection of the character, his character in us to be reflected. The cleansing of the sanctuary involves a work of investigation, a work of judgment. This work must be performed prior to the coming of Christ, okay? This work must be performed prior to the coming of Christ, before Jesus comes to redeem his people. For when he comes, his reward is with him to give to every man according to his works. The people were required to afflict their souls before God, to confess their sins, that they might be atoned for and blot out. The plan of salvation must, of necessity, include not only forgiveness of sin, but 
complete restoration. Salvation from sin is more than forgiveness of sin. Forgiveness presupposes sin and is conditional upon breaking with it. Sanctification is a separ is separation from sin and indicates deliverance from its power and victory over it. Then sanctuary, uh, the sanctuary service. That's why we need to understand that involves victory over sin. We cannot, we have to make sure that Jesus is going to be walking our hearts, and we are going to be, we are going to be victorious. We are not supposed to be uh, thinking that you know just uh, sin and forgive, sin and forgive, sin and forgive, sin and ask to forgive. Jesus wants to give us victory. Everyone who believes on Christ, everyone who relies or the keeping power of a risen Savior that has suffered the penalty pronounced upon the transgressor, everyone who resists temptations and in the midst of evil copies the pattern given in the Christian life, will, through faith in the atoning sacrifice of Christ, become a partaker of divine nature. That's what I want to, to be. Become a partaker of divine nature. This is a connection, relationship with Jesus. And it's available to us now. Salvation, strength. And said, verily, I said unto you, except be, be converted and become as a little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18.3. This has to be done daily. Unless you change, it says. Christ has declared, if any man sin, if he, we have a advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, he will save to the uttermost all who come to him in faith. He ever lived to make intercession for us, to save us completely. Jesus is going to make sure that we are going to be fit to live there. That there will be nobody there like Satan try to make a, a, a try to make a noise or, or try to, to mess up everything again. That, 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 it's not going to happen. Jesus is going to make sure he's going to have his people there that loves him with all his heart, love him all the time, Love him without question. Jesus is going to make sure. The first step in reconciliation to God is the conviction of sin. That's the first step. Sin is the transgression of the law. By the law is the knowledge of sin. In order to see his guilt, the sinner must test his character by God's great standard of righteousness. It is a mirror which shows the perfection of a righteous character and enables him to discern the defects in his own. Great Controversies 467. Said the angel, set your heart in order. Set your heart in order. I'm just, I'm just beginning, I'm just start, I'm just beginning right now. We have to become one with Christ. I said we have to become one with Christ. The knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ expressed in character is the, is the very highest education. It is the key that opens the portals of the heavenly city. This knowledge, it is God's purpose that all who put on Christ shall possess. And Jesus said, this is a life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Romans 16, 20. In order for this to happen, we have to 
the, we need to overcome sin. There's, there has to be nothing in our hearts in harmony with Satan. Nothing. God will do what needs to be done. Victor over sin. And it's possible with Jesus. There is hope for every one of us. But only in one way. Only in one way. By fastening ourselves to Christ. And exerting every energy to attain to the perfection of his character. This is a selective message. And we need to do this daily. Daily. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Genesis 32, 26. I will not let you go unless you bless me. This should be our prayer every day. Every day. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience. Hebrews 10, 22. So we can have a few hearts. True reformation, true reformation begins with soul cleaning. Ministry of Healing 180. Well done, good and faithful servant. Matthew 25, 23. This is what we want to hear from the Lord Jesus Christ. Well done, good and faithful servant. Nothing will exist there but love, joy, and harmony. That's why Jesus is going to make sure that his people love him more than anything because there will be no, there will nothing else but love, joy, and harmony. Nothing else. There will be no confusion there. And behold, I come quickly. Revelations 22, 12. This is a, a message for us today that uh, I believe it, it's a serious study on the great day of autonomy. If you are taking serious what Jesus is doing for us, the cleansing of the, the most holy place, the, the cleansing of the sanctuary, that, that one cannot be cleansed until he cleans here. You got to be in harmony. So if he's doing that, we need to be doing the same thing here. We need to be afflicting our souls. God help us to stay connected to Jesus. He's the only way. He's the hope that we have. We, we don't need to be afraid of anything, but we need to make sure that we stay connected with Jesus. Amen. We are going to sing, uh, Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. I believe it's a, I believe it's a number before we before we sing we're gonna we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, this is a message that can shake us. We think everything is good. Everything is all right. But the Bible tells us it's time now to afflict our souls. It's time to be one with you. So we don't have time to play. Whatever you like, put in our hearts. Whatever is your will, Help us to do. Help us, O oh Father, to be faithful to you, to love you anywhere, 
everywhere, every time. We need a new heart, Father. We need your Holy Spirit in us. We want to be with you forever. But we, we still not there yet. We pray that you fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. Because we want to live for you. We want your name to be honored and be glorified. We thank you for everything, Father. Bless our church. Bless your people, Father. Help us to be ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.